Hello, this is Rupinder Seyal and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. So as you know, there is a whole controversy going around in the world about the lab leak theory that COVID-19 was actually created in the lab, especially in the lab of Wuhan Institute of Virology, the same city where the Wuhan seafood market is, where the first cases of COVID-19 came out. So recently, the scientists involved in the whole research about bats and collecting samples of viruses which are very related to SARS coronavirus. Dr. Shi Zheng Li has spoken to New York Times in an interview over phone and email. So what has she revealed and what are its implications for lab leak theory? Let's talk about it today. Now, this is the article that is recently published in New York Times where Amy Chen and Chris Buckley interviewed Dr. Shi Zheng Li about her research and about the whole controversy regarding the lab leak theory as well as the controversy and the speculations about you know some of the unconfirmed allegations and unconfirmed hypotheses about how the lab leak came about, whether it was a bioweapon, whether it was an accident. So she spoke about it uh, you know, in pretty definitive terms. Okay, before we get to the burning question that the reporters asked about the origin of COVID-19, we should commend Dr. Shi that she was contacted out of the blue via phone and then email. Basically, these reporters just picked up their phones and you know called her to see if she picked up and she picked up actually. And I think we should give the credit both to her as well as the Chinese government because usually Chinese government is pretty tight-lipped about such incidents and as and it has been particularly very you know bristly about the whole thing. So Dr. Shi is still available and she's still willing to talk to reporters as well as giving talks in public. She has not been prohibited from doing so. So I think we should give the devil his or her due here. Anyhow, so when the reporters asked, did Dr. Shi's lab had any source of the new coronavirus? So that is SARS coronavirus 2 because there is the earlier 2003 coronavirus also. So did they have any samples of the new coronavirus before the pandemic? This is really important. This is as blunt as it could get. And her answer was no. Now we could say that she is lying. We don't know yet until we find the evidence incriminating her and proving that she is lying. But here she said no. She did not have samples of the current coronavirus before the pandemic. The earliest sample, the most related sample that she has, it is published in literature, it is called RAT G13. And it is the closest relative of SARS coronavirus 2. It, it is kept in her lab. This is 96% similar. Now, to a layman, to general public, it sounds like, right, 96% is as good as 100%. But according to genomic standards and according to sequence similarities, they are really, really different, you know, vastly different actually. If you compare, for example, humans and chimpanzees, they are almost 99% equivalent. So 96% goes a lot of the way. And WHO's report, you know, it, it exonerated Wuhan Institute of Virology, but there were some concerns by many scientists that the report was not thorough in invest investigating the lab leak theory so and a letter written by many prominent virologists recently published in science talks that both the natural origin as well as the lab leak theory is you know they are both on the table they are both viable hypotheses i would also like to mention here just a side point that there is a difference between hypothesis and a theory you know we always say lab leak theory lab leak theory it's not a theory Theory in science has a very different meaning. We have a theory of gravitation. You know, we have theory of magnetism. We have a theory of electricity. We don't have a theory here. Okay, theory is something which is almost like a law in science. We have a hypothesis, which is an explanation which can be proven or disproven. So it is a lab leak hypothesis. But anyhow, we are not getting into the word dissection here. And what about gain of function research? So the reporters asked her about whether she has carried out any gain of function research. And the reference was to this paper published in PLOS Pathogens, where they did some experiments where they modified the coronaviruses and tested whether they could jump hosts. And they found that some of them did actually when they recombined the 
genetic material, they did possess the ability to jump host and infect human cells. But that is actually not the technical definition of gain of function research. Gain of function usually refers to either increased transmissibility or change in virulence. So either more virulence or less virulence. So gain of function. So anything which gains a virus any more power than it naturally has. That is called gain of function research. Here it was change of host and they had already evidence that you know it was very likely to happen anytime soon. So they were conducting research very carefully on this, but they did not conduct exactly gain of function research. And in my previous video on lab leak theory, I have also cleared it up that it was not gain of function research. And this is prominent from you know her statement in that paper itself. So this is highlighted by me from that paper. So they did a five year longitudinal study for these coronaviruses that and demonstrated that all the building blocks of the pandemic SARS coronavirus genome are present in bat SARS coronaviruses. This is talking about the 2003 pandemic because they were still trying to locate its origins. And from a single location in Yunnan, they were able to say that. Okay? The data show that frequent recombination events have happened among those coronaviruses. And while we cannot rule out the possibility that similar gene pools exist elsewhere, we have provided sufficient evidence to conclude that coronavirus most likely originated from horseshoe bats via recombination events among existing SARS coronaviruses. This is a huge understatement, I, I would like to say. And this is anything in retrospective, it looks like a prediction. So the risk of spillover, they also indicate here, into people and emergence of a disease similar to SARS is possible. And that's what actually happened in 2020. Now this is the timeline of COVID-19. We have 8th of December 2019 when the first recorded case was you know, documented in Wuhan with SARS coronavirus 2 like symptoms and later on the genome sequences started being available and more studies being done. Uh, you know, for the whole world was alerted by China. So 8th of December is when the first patients were documented. And I would like to say all these patients were from Wuhan seafood market. Now this is the ultimate conundrum here. Both the hotbed of zoonotic transfer that the viruses get jumped from one host to another, that epicenter Wuhan seafood market, as well as one of the world's most pre prestigious institutes working on bad coronaviruses are both located, you know, within the same city. That is, that is a huge conundrum right here. If they were located poles apart in China, you know, it could have been a different story, but they are both located in the same, same location, same city. So, and Wuhan is also a metropolitan city with connections to almost every global city in the world, you know, the big metropolitan cities, whether in Europe or Australia or US, you know, talk about connections here, right? So anyhow, another kind of allegation that US intelligence had had was that three employees of Wuhan Institute of Virology fell sick in late 2019 with SARS coronavirus 2 like symptoms. Now, this is the statement that NBC News reported. The US government has reason to believe. Look at the statement here. I would also say this is not equal to evidence. Okay. We all trust in God, but every, everything else must have evidence. So I think it is a suspicious statement. Anyhow, US government has reason to believe that several researchers, okay, so they sometimes say several, sometimes they three, say three, okay, inside the Wuhan Institute of Virology became sick in autumn of 2019. They don't say the dates, it's just autumn. Before the first identified case of the outbreak with symptoms consistent with both the COVID-19 and common seasonal illnesses. So which one was it? We don't know. This raises questions about the credibility of Xi Li and her public claim that there was zero infection among the staff and students of SARS coronavirus 2 or coronavirus or SARS related viruses. Now this is, I think, a leap of faith here because 
Okay, she said about origin of coronaviruses and about zero infection with coronaviruses, but maybe she did not say, you know, that they fell sick of some other flu-like virus disease. So I think it's a mixed statement. We don't know who is right or wrong here. Both Xi Jinping and U.S. government, you know, have things to say. I think or the things to prove. But anyways, she uh, retorted back. She replied back. Okay, give me the names of the three employees or several employees that they are claiming that fell sick. You know, and to U.S. government's credit, U China's government has also not revealed you know the lab records and the hospital records of the employees. So both of the both of the governments are kind of you know in trouble here. Uh, anyway, so there is no clear evidence either in favor or against the the hypothesis here. And Jamie Metzel, a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and a former national security official, this he made that statement and is now calling on the Biden administration to release the evidence used to make these assess assessments about the Chinese military and the three sick researchers. Who are these three sick researchers? There is no evidence that has been released by U.S. government yet. Okay, and there have been a lot of uh, you know articles about talking about the Occam's razor argument. That Occam's razor argument is the simplest explanation, and it automatically points to Xi Jinping's lab. Okay, I would like to kind of dismantle that. Not because I favor Xi Jinping or I am partial to China. I just want to say this is a wrong assessment of Occam's razor, and I think we have to look at it in both ways. The way that people are looking is okay. Wuhan Institute of Virology was doing this this controversial research, probably gain of function research, which she has denied. Okay, anyways, she was doing this research on bad coronaviruses, and okay, so and there is a coronavirus epidemic in the same city, starting in the same city. So automatically, it goes to Wuhan Institute of Virology to Shi Jingli. Okay, first of all, let's look at the Occam's razor argument, which is that the simplest explanation is usually the best one. Law of parsimony. So we have two scenarios here. One is Wuhan Institute of Virology, Dr. Lee's lab. You know, dozens of researchers. I'm not sure how many they employ, but I'm guessing below hundred. And then we have the Wuhan Seafood Market. Where hundreds and thousands of sick wildlife animals sometimes rare endangered animals are kept in inhospitable conditions in very filthy conditions that have been extensively documented and they are constantly in touch with human handlers without you know biosafety lab equipment of course sometimes with bare hands often with bare hands i think so which one is the simplest argument for jumping the host if bad coronavirus had to jump hosts, would this likely scenario be more fruitful for the virus, or would this provide more opportunities where hundreds and thousands of interactions with customers and handlers and you know uh, traders are happening every day, thousands of times, you know, multiple million times of the year? And here there is, of course, you know, there is sterilization, there is adequate controls of the lab, there is you know containment there is biological hazard and uh, hazard management has it containment which one has more likelihood so i think occam's razor actually definitely points to a natural origin wuhan steep seafood market or the caves where these bats are found anyhow this is, these are some of the images actually published in uh, scientific reports another journal of nature where they document the uh, incredibly inhospitable and filthy conditions that these organisms are kept in well by the way china closed this market soon after the pandemic and they also closed the farms where these animals were bred and raised and no country is kind of blameless here china also you know has been very angry and very uh, attacking in its arguments against uh, any blame that okay wuhan institute of virology or China could be the origin of the pandemic and sometimes it even released statements on Twitter that they are saying that actually it was the US Army and their officers who brought the coronavirus from US to China in October 2019 when the military games happened in China. So I, I think nobody is blameless here. 
And finally, I would like also like to mention that China has a despicable record of human rights. A lot of people have been silenced, have been detained, have been put to, put away in you know unknown locations. And you can see this article from CNN for more details about this. There has been a huge conspiracy of silence. So I think for the origins of coronavirus to be clear, China government as well as other governments should come together without you know blaming each other for the pandemic or anything else and should come together to solve the riddle how this virus came about they should be more transparent about the data availability as well as their records so that we get to the bottom of this okay so that was my discussion of the recent comments by dr shi jeng li regarding her interview with new york times let me know if you have any doubts comments or questions about it thank you for watching and i will see you next time